TSN 1050 Trana is celebrating its 10-year anniversary today. How about that? They are the home of the Argos. But you wouldn't know it. Austin Matthews, Kyle Lowry, Vladdy, some soccer player I've never seen or heard of. And then Tom Brady, Tampa Tom. What the hell? Come on, TSN 1050 Toronto. What does this say? This <laughs> is the Rod Peterson Show. Uh, so, welcome. In all fairness, yeah. they did that. And for, what, three weeks around Christmas time, I had a Tom Brady book and shirts sitting out here every day. Yeah, you're not the voice of the Argos. But that's right. Welcome, Canada, to uh, Canada's daytime sports talk show. It's the RP Show. We're digital only today because we are preempted on Game Plus television. So thanks for checking us out over here, YouTube, Facebook, or listen live at rodpeterson.com. And also, we've had some juggling here with our guests today, so I appreciate a good pal of mine jumping on, Sammy Cosentino, because... Joey Alferi from TSN Montreal had something came up with him. He was going to be with us here in hour one. So Sammy's going to join us. You're going to notice a lot of junior hockey theme here. A Memorial Cup canceled yesterday. An OHL prospects tournament being planned, it sounds like. We'll see what Sammy knows about that. And Kirk Myers will be joining us from the Calgary bubble in advance of the Grand Slam, which is about to open up this week. So there's that and a lot of other things. Are you ready to go, Dupes? I'm ready. Okay, thanks, everybody, for chiming in. I will get to your comments in a moment. And thank you to Game Plus, by the way, for tweeting, catch the Rod Peterson show on the streams. That's a partner, eh? Oh, yeah. How about that? How about that? So I said it. There you go. Thanks, Rick Regan. And I say... Canada's daytime uh, sports talk show, but I say thank you to our American friends for tuning in. Director Jordan, can we please hit the quick six? Uh, I'm writing things like uh, so much is going on today. Number one, Tuesday NHL leftovers. Dupes and I were calling a hockey game last night. It didn't face off until 8 p.m. Mountain. So I guess you got to see quite a bit of your Leafs. That's right. Uh, So David Riddick loses his Leafs debut. Against his old team, the Calgary Flames. Couple thoughts on that. Could they not have found him blue gloves and pads? I know, I know, I know. I was a goalie, so he wanted to wear his gear. But it looked a little um, junior B-ish yeah. to see David Riddick wearing Flames gear with Leafs equipment. Was uh, sport check not open? I know, right? <laughs> Get me some. At least paint him. There's a sport check across the street from the rink. At least put some some spray paint on him or tape him or something. Didn't look. It didn't look good. No, it didn't. And then I found out from a hockey guy yesterday, and maybe this was widely reported. I don't know. Riddick flew on the Flames jet to Toronto. Was that reported? Yeah, with the team. Okay. Yeah, I, I was not aware if that was reported or not. That's a good story. Uh, the Bruins beat the Sabers in Taylor Hall's debut. He didn't have any points, but I think he had three shots on net, and he looked pretty good. From the little bits that I saw of that game. And I want to say this. Tanner Geno, what do you know? Scored his first NHL goal with the Nashville Predators. The pride of Oxbow, Saskatchewan. And the former Moose Jaw Warrior. So it was a pretty good night all in all NHL wise. No kid. Except for the Leafs and David Riddick. That's right. But I mean, over time, whatever. You get a point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's that. Point two. Will the CFL play? Boy, this is interesting because you're having your talks with your people. I'm having talks with my people. You see what's being reported out there. The vaccination things ramped up. Like uh, I was told today that I was eligible to go, but I'm, I'm not hanging off Dr. Shahab's word. Like I'll get there when I get there. I had stuff to do today. Is that I'm not anti-vaccine, but I'll go when it fits into my schedule. Is there something wrong with that? I don't think so. I think you said you'd go when you're up in the queue, right? I'm yeah. not fighting it, but not gonna I'm not gonna be elbowing my way to the front of the line. No, like some right? are. I'll let you know those who really need it the vulnerable. Not that I don't need it, but uh no, I'll go when I'm eligible, absolutely. So it's uh it's a up and down. I think your best bet is to just turn your social media off. Yeah. Because Oh, you see some people say it's going to happen for sure. Then you see others saying, well, this is what's going on in the States. And then they're saying, even if it's, you're vaccinated, you still got to social distance and wear masks. There's no way there's going to be a season. It's just, uh, 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 uh. right? And I feel so horribly for the people that are, you know, involved, right? It, def- it affects their life, i.e. CFL players, coaches, staff, obviously the media. Um, my 
bet on a season would be 50-50. Those that are in the know that know more than me but are have an objective opinion on it, like no horse in the race, are saying 60-40 to the no. Yesterday we debated would Ottawa give them money and we said 50-50 there. I will say will there be a CFL season in 2021? 50-50 as well. And again, to those in the know, say 60-40. But I had a guy in the league say to me yesterday, Rod, if we're going hurtling towards a merger here, why would they not just turn out the lights on 2021 and get ready for next year and promote that? And I said, well, I don't know what's happening in the top levels of the Canadian Football League. I hear things. Gosh knows there's a lot of people that have been let go by the Canadian Football League that still have, they still know what's going on. Right, in, in layoffs and stuff from the teams. You think people don't talk? That's the one thing I don't understand. Do, you, yeah. do the leaders think that we're not talking? I think if you've never been on the front lines with, with sports, pro sports and the media, if you've just kind of been parachuted into your position, you don't realize at the top and you don't realize what goes on in the front lines, you wouldn't know what goes on on the front lines. Isn't that fair? That's fair. I don't think they have any idea that we all talk to each other. <laughs> I know. And it's just human nature. Yes. Right? It's just human nature. But it's so tough. Like, you know, we're talking to players across the league, too, that are coming to us wondering, when are we going to play? What's going to happen? Right? And they're concerned, too. And, and you know, they know that the season's not going to start on time because we've heard that American players need, you know, likely six to eight weeks to from an announcement to be ready to go for the start of camp. They got to get into the country. They got to get their family situation taken care of. They housing, all of that kind of stuff. They need six to eight weeks before camp starts. So we know we're past that and they're not starting on time, but yet the players are still in limbo because there's still a chance that their phone might ring and say, we need you to report for camp next week. And so they're full of anxiety because how do they know what's coming or how can they make decisions about getting a job or things with family or, you know, God forbid, you know, their significant other's pregnant and going to deliver a child or who knows what's going on that they have to deal with. And yet they're sitting there being like, I can't make any decisions because my phone might ring and they haven't canceled the season or they haven't suspended play yet. So it's tough and, and it feels like nobody cares about the players. God bless you for commenting, everybody, but this is not the comment talk. I can't get to your comments. This is the quick six show topics here for the Four Seasons Sports Palace and what we call the warm-up. Dine uh, in is not an option at the Four Seasons. Order a pizza. They've got their liquor store, beer store, delivery as well. Four Seasons, check it out. Moving on to point three, the Regina Pats now 0-2 without Connor Bedard. I mentioned that the Pats... Uh, lost last night to the Prince Albert Raiders 4-2, a night after losing to the Winnipeg Ice 3-1, so they're 0-2 without their rookie sensation, Connor Bedard. You see, I brought it today for the Winnipeg people. That is the Winnipeg Ice lid. How nice oh, is that? Beautiful. That's the one that I got caught wearing while having an outdoor bench coffee Saturday by the president of the Pats. He just happened to drive by and he didn't say anything that, about me wearing a Winnipeg Ice hat, so that's good. But I, I just love that lid. I love that logo. I love their colors. I love me some Winnipeg Ice, which last night, by the way, for those that were in the bubble, the dub hub, we've mentioned how it's that awkward if you run into somebody or, you know. Everybody wants to shake hands, yeah, but you then they do the can't. awkward. Do we fist bump? Do we not? Right. Elbows? So if you saw me celebrating on the concourse last night prior to the game, here's why. There was a Western Hockey League general manager who came up to me, and we were kind of this far, and his thing was, are you back? I said, I'm back. He's like, what does that mean? And I said, I'm going to be the TV voice of the Regina Pats, potentially till the end of time, probably about 27 games a year, 24 at home-ish, and selected road games, no bus. And he's like, hey, and I'm doing, hey, back in the dub. Time to celebrate. And here's the great thing about major, hockey, major junior hockey. It's high enough level hockey that the franchises are worth at least now $10 million-ish. Rumored Wheat Kings went for $8 million. Compare that to the Montreal Alouettes, who the new owners got for nothing. Zero. Like the football guys' minds are blown at how, what these WHL franchises are worth. It's high enough hockey that you're eating steak and you're going to the NHL draft and you're in these fabulous facilities, but it's low enough level hockey that you can walk down the street and not have everybody tugging at you to ask you about the latest thing. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just realized when I went up to Emma Lake a couple of years ago, after I left the rider thing, you know, it's like you want to be able to visit the Mansons and the Tippets and the Simpsons at the lake in the summertime because that's where the hockey people are in Lake Country. But when just with the riders, it's just when you're walking down the beach, everybody's running out of their cabin. Hey, 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 who's starting this week? Hey, hey, hey. What's happening with Charleston Hughes? And it just, like, that gets to be a little much. See what I mean? Like, it's yeah. so high level, it gets exhausting after a while. Major, junior, you get to do all those great things, but you're just in this little subculture over here that not everybody cares about, but it's a wonderful subculture. And that's your boys. Yeah. So that's, hence, was the general manager giving a, hey, you're back. <laughs> Very happy. Four to the Blue Jays. Somebody was asking, writing in about the Blue Jays earlier. They won yesterday 7-3 against the New York Yankees in Dunedin. George Springer took batting practice, but there's still no timeline on his return. I'm sure Clark's watching this very closely. Everything looks great about the Blue Jays. Their unis, their offense, their pitching for the most part. So I click open the uh, score app this morning and I see Blue Jays fifth in the American League East. I'm like, what the hell? They're winning. I'm like, wait a minute. They're in a... Four-way tie for second place at five and six. So I'm just thinking with Springer, I know enough about baseball and certainly played it enough to realize a guy like George Springer could affect a couple of wins probably had he played. I'm not saying he's soft or he should be playing, but they're going off on a nine-game road trip after today, and he's not going. So I'm just saying with Springer, they could very easily be in first place. Am I right? And it's so disappointing because he's the prize free agent. Ah. And it's just like, you mean I can buy the toy, but I can't play with the toy? So why did I buy the toy? Mm -hmm. But you just hope he's back soon. I really do. Uh, Okay, I'll chime in with a couple of. uh... (laughs) Monty, the Blades and Pats is tomorrow night. Yes, 4 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, From Mick Panko, my good good man, Mick Panko, who is the chaplain for the uh, U of R Rams, by the way, football program. Rod, I'm excited for you. Your excitement in it is awesome. Thank you. It's genuine, believe me, to be back. From T-Bone Stuff on YouTube says, Hey, Roddy, keep on doing an amazing show. That's the plan. Day by day, Jeff in Winnipeg says, uh, Rod, let's see the DuPont brand. Why don't you have it out here? You got it in your, uh, it's in the office. It's in your office. I can bring it up. That sucker is heavy. Oh, yeah. Maybe we'll just like leave really, it You here. should leave it out here. Okay. But where are we going to light the fire to heat up the brand? That's I know. What I want to know. That needs to happen, yes. Um, oh, point five on the MLSE thing. I would waver a little bit on my report on the MLSE CFL thing if it wasn't for who's giving me the information, by the way. I don't know how many times I need to tell you this. In no way, shape, or form am I ever going to hint who it is, but these are guys that frankly didn't have my number. They got it from, it wasn't in my phone. Big shots. Okay. So a lot of the people that are denying my report or completely ignoring my report are those that are directly affected by MLSE. Like, come on. So anyways, I see people were writing in saying, boycott MLSE, boycott it. You're not going to boycott MLSE. You're not going to. You can try it. How did that gas boycott work out seven, eight years ago? Here's how Nobody buy gas on this day. Yeah. And then you see eight cars lined up. <laughs> or nobody go to that gas station. And here's the thing about boycotts. They don't really work. I mean, they work. No, at, they, they, don't work. they work. They can work. But at the end of the day, we're, we are, I don't want to say lazy is not the right word, but we're creatures of convenience. Yeah. So... I can say, oh, look at, I don't like that gas station. I agree with it you. It works till you need but gas, it's, but it's closest, so I'm going, right? But if there was another one right next door, yeah, I might choose the other one because I believe in what you want me to boycott. But if it's the only one in my neighborhood, I'm going. I'm not going to the other side of town just to go with, along with the boycott. People aren't going to go out of their way. Yeah. So, um, Connor Anderson's watching. Young, young. Is he 16 yet? He's in York, and he says, it sucks I can't watch the Pats games, but I sure do love watching the clips on the Access Now page on Twitter. Rod, the way you call the games is amazing. Thank you, Connor. I was put on this earth to call hockey games and some football games and help people. Everything's coming together. What did the guy say on the weekend, wrote into the website? He says, the universe corrects itself. 
That's right. I believe that has happened. The universe has corrected itself as far as it relates to my life. And uh, point six, NFL players want to bo- boycott OTAs. I don't know if you saw that. That was a fairly late-breaking yeah, story. Did. You did? You yeah. see that? <laughs> a lot of boycotts going on. Denver Broncos. Do you think they can them. pull it off? Well, of course. You know, the players in pro sports have more power in that sense than ever. I mean, except in the CFL, it feels like, right? They have more power. So if the players aren't going to show up to camp, what are you going to do? I don't think the league's going to suspend them, uh, an entire team. So if they're united and they don't think it's safe and they're recommended not to go to OTAs, they won't go. They can do it with, though, they didn't have them last year. They didn't have a a training camp. They got the whole season. Well, look at, you know, Brady had those private workouts in the park and they'll find (laughs) another way. They won a Super Bowl. To get them in. Uh... The warm-up is brought to you by the Four Seasons Sports Palace. Order a fabulous Four Seasons pizza and your favorite beverage for takeout and delivery. One-stop shopping, call, or order online. Sammy Cosentino joins us next. We're just getting rolling here on the RP Show. Canada's daytime sports talk show continues after this. Game Plus Television, YouTube, and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports talk for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Listen live. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.